Crash Kings were formed by brothers Tony and Mike Bolivo, as well as Tommy Rhodes. Instead of guitar, their sound is driven by Tony's sky-high tenor, more like alto, vocals, and powerful piano, as well as Mike on the bass and Tommy on drums, with the custom clavinet made to play sounds similar to a lead guitar. Tambourine is used throughout as well. I was introduced to the band a couple years ago, and since then, they've become one of my favorites. I love the fresh, strong feel given by the piano, as well as the creativity integrated into their songs. The band might not be especially well known, but I highly enjoy the music, and I'd like to maybe introduce it to some more people. This time I'll look at their debut album, self-titled Crash Kings. First off is Mountain Man. This song was one of the band's only hits. Personally, it's not my absolute favorite, but I do think it has some interesting concepts in it. It's a slower song, making heavy use of long, sustained notes with sixteenths on the drums and bass keeping the song moving. It stays at a moderate volume for the most part. The chorus plays through twice each time, once very lightly, then again at full volume. The part leading up to the chorus with claps gives it a nice touch, and can maybe be even a little humorous. Directly after the second chorus, there's a four-measure build-up leading to a thunderous section, with Tony outright screaming over everything. The final chorus has simply drums and vocals for the first half, then everything kicks in again the second time. Overall, I do enjoy the song, though I don't like it the most out of all on this album, and it also can be a bit repetitive. Next up is 1985. Pounding eighths on the piano started out. After a couple bars, the bass comes in. After that, the drums, with a rhythm I really adore. The verse is tense and unhappy. The pre-chorus helps the song transition to the chorus, which opens up to a more positive, catchy feel. The song's speedy tempo makes it really jam. In general, the verse features a lot of offbeat accents in the piano and bass, and especially the pre-chorus. However, the chorus has a lot more even rhythms, with most instruments playing straight eighths. The verse is in a minor key, C. After eight bars, it goes to E-flat major. Then, in the chorus, it goes to D-flat major. Needless to say, it bounces between keys quite frequently. In the chorus, a desk camp with whole notes is laid over the band, as well as pleasant harmonies in the vocals. The tambourine is more apparent here than possibly any other song on the album. The halftime section is featured after the second chorus, lulling and drowsy. This was a cool addition. One small detail I like is how the background comes in just half a beat after the chorus starts. I really like the final chorus. It starts out with eighths on the piano again, and after eight bars, the bass comes in, playing the same note relatively high on the instrument, and four bars after that, the percussion builds up to the chorus playing through normally again. I really adore this song. It strikes a great balance between being fun and feel good to listen to and having adornments to look through throughout it, which, in my opinion, is one of the things that should be strived for in music. It's a real gem, and I love hearing it every time. Third is It's Only Wednesday. This song is somewhat restrained compared to many other songs on the album. It takes place at a moderately slow tempo with swung 16th notes. This, combined with ghost notes on the snare and steady tambourine, give the song an awesome groove. Like 1985, it makes frequent use of tambourine. The bass of the piano is quite prevalent as well. It's in a minor key, but in one progression, it'll go from the main chord of the key to its relative major. The song has a lot of odd phrases. The verse utilizes a 6-bar phrase, while the chorus has another 6-bar phrase with the measure in 2-4, then a 2-bar phrase, and another measure in 2-4. Following the second chorus, there's a highly chromatic section with oddly timed accents and another 2-4 measure thrown in. After that, there's that clavinet playing the melody, with the drums and bass picking up halfway through. My favorite part of this song is the final chorus, where it's simply the high treble of the piano and vocals for one measure, then the background comes back in. I think the ending's neat too. The last line of lyrics is sung over a G-flat minor chord. Due to the moderate nature of the song, I think it could have used a section where the filter is completely removed, like in Mountain Man. Like most everything on the album, however, I think this entry is good. After that comes Come Away. The song is very slow paced, with a beat approximately every second. Compared with some of the other songs, it's very passive, even more than It's Only Wednesday. It's solemn, mellow, and relaxing all at the same time. The chorus takes it up to a forte volume while still preserving the relaxed tempo and serious tone. Strings added post-recording were just the right complement to the piece.
I find this song to be really beautiful. Honestly, there's nothing more to say. Continuing the trend of songs that are at least partially mellow, we have Nonbeliever. It's slow, but faster than Come Away. The song starts out with a somewhat syncopated clavinet part. Before long, the drums and bass come in, playing at about a mezzo piano volume, yielding to the lyrics and creating a laid-back sequence. The instruments kick it up just a notch in the pre-chorus. The chorus contains outstanding vocal performance, as well as meaningful chords on the piano. The toms are utilized really well here, making the section sort of... marching. Like it's only Wednesday, a lot of sections are oddly measured. The pre-chorus has three bars of 6-4, followed by two bars of 4-4, while the chorus has two bars of 3-4 and one bar of 5-4. In the final chorus, volume increases in the percussion, the piano part is more complicated, involving 16ths, and there's chanting laid over it all. It might as well be an anthem at this point. This piece has a natural progression of soft and loud, and I think it's pretty great. Following Nonbeliever is 14 Arms. It's absolutely nuts and I love it. It's incredibly fast, even more than 1985. It has an intensity and volume like no other. It starts out with 16th notes on the bass and on the ride near the bell, already driving the song forward. After that, the drums go to a standard beat, the piano plays dotted eighths over them, and the synthesized track sustains the same note. The lyrics then come in, the background cutting out for just a couple of beats. The verse totally rocks out. It's incredibly fun to listen to and impossible not to bob your head to. Even with this, the song still has clever intricacies. After a while of that, the bass notes cut out with quarter notes on the ride, full notes on the bass guitar, and eighths bouncing apart on the piano. At the end of that section, it builds up, playing a B flat and F on the piano, then a B natural and G. to a halftime section in the song's keys relative minor, where the rhythms are a bit less crazy, also continuing claps, just like a mountain man. Before long, though, it goes back to that amazing beat again. I also can't forget to mention the amazing drum fills Tommy plays throughout. In case you couldn't tell, I really adore 14 Arms. The blazingly fast tempo and awesome instrumentation is just impossible to resist. The seventh song on the album is Raincoat. Like 14 Arms, it alternates between normal and halftime. With Raincoat, however, the verse is in halftime, and the chorus is in normal time. Due to certain elements, I'd almost say the verse is in normal time, and the chorus is in double time. Throughout most of the song, including those two segments, the song never goes to any extremes. The verse is in a minor key, but doesn't give feelings of disdain at all. It's calming and relaxing. The effect added in post-recording gives just the variety needed to keep the section from being too dull. I like the pre-chorus a lot. It opens up on the instruments and Tony sings a high note over them. The chorus has the piano playing eighths and the drums playing the snare twice as often, giving it the double time feel. It's encouraging, uplifting, and joyful. It also doesn't push things so much that it becomes hyper like 14 arms. Towards the end, there's a strange effect where random sounds build up and then suddenly stop. I must admit, this felt a little out of place and could have probably been omitted. This, however, doesn't stop Raincoat from being an outstanding piece. After Raincoat is You Got Me. I usually don't like comparing things, but I can't help but point out the similarities I feel this song has to When the Levee Breaks, with a sluggish tempo, gritty guitar or clavinet in this case, and negative tone. After a while, the song opens up a bit with piano and the ride cymbal, creating a more clean tone, then goes back to the other feel. These two parts alternate frequently throughout the song. I like listening to the section where the piano has a prominent part and comes in on the end of one, with the other instruments matching it, though it doesn't come up as often. For some parts of the song, the tambourine plays 32nd notes, which is a nice upbeat light in a dark song. About two thirds of the way through, the song stays on the same chord and increases in volume, adding distorted effects in, becoming more and more twisted. This could be considered another comparison to When the Levee Breaks. I must admit, this might make the song my least favorite on the album. 
For one, the song is already somewhat repetitive. It could have at least added more parts in besides indistinguishable noise. Secondly, it just feels out of place. I understand that a normal tone wasn't what it was supposed to be here, that it's supposed to be despairing and uncomfortable. I understand also that this type of thing is subjective, but it could have at least been a bit more tasteful. The penultimate song, Saving Grace, might just be my favorite on the album. Starting off, it has the most wacky usage of meter out of all of them. The intro has two bars of 7-4, then a bar of 5-4, then two bars of 4-4. It's pretty ludicrous. The pattern then repeats twice to make the verse. This, combined with a minor key and plenty of strongly accented notes, gives the intro and verse a striking, searing mood. On the first time through that unordinary sequence of time signatures, all the instruments, including the bass and treble range of the piano, not including clavinet or tambourine, are playing at full volume to introduce the song. The second time, the piano cuts out and the bass guitar and drums take down the volume several notches while the vocals come in. The third time, the drums and bass kick up the volume a bit while the bass of the piano comes in, as well as shaker, a nice departure from the usual tambourine. After it's played all three times, the song goes to an even meter, also going to a somewhat chromatic progression in the song's parallel key. It's calming at first, building up until all the notes are heavy and meaningful. The next section has the same chord progression but a less swaying beat, and could be considered a chorus, though it never repeats. After that, it goes back to the sequence of odd meters. After the swaying section, instead of going to the chorus, the titular lyrics are said over five powerful half notes, plus two more in the instruments. There's a fermata, then a gorgeous piano solo with the chords of the chorus. The drums and bass guitar come in over this piano solo and very gradually crescendo, just like in the previous section. The payoff to this is immense. Everything is at a full fortissimo volume, and the main lyrics are sung even more loudly, but not screamed. For the perfect ending, it goes back to the segment in the minor key. Saving Grace is creative, powerful, and very fun to listen to, which is why I think it's an excellent song. The final entry on the album is My Love. It's a sincere piece, like a letter to an old friend. It's a bit like Come Away, actually. One of the first things I notice is that there's 30 second note fills on drums that manage to fit in with the song perfectly. I also like how in the second chorus onwards, the vocals are echoed. The song stays at a moderate volume for most of the duration. I don't think it needed to do anything unusual or rambunctious. In fact, especially after Saving Grace, I think the tame nature of the song was a great conclusion. I think the tame nature of the song is a great conclusion. I love the Crash Kings, and I also think this album is pretty great. It's got outstanding piano and creative use of clavinet, awesome drums and good utilization of tambourine and shaker, and marvelous bass. It's got very inspired touches and great grooves. It has tons of variety in style, from fast to slow, powerful to calming. Though not every song's perfect, nothing is that way, and parts don't represent a whole. I definitely recommend checking out this album, and this band, if you haven't. Watch a guy act like he knows stuff about music because he composes stuff and hits drums.